everybody, this is Jessica Risker and thanks for watching Music Therapy. Um, I am a Chicago musician, I'm also a licensed clinical professional counselor and Music Therapy is a show uh, focused on mental health issues, particularly geared towards creatives and musicians, artists. Um, today I'm going to be doing an interview with Peter Oren. He's going to be coming on in, in just a couple minutes here, um, but I'll catch you up on some things I have coming up. Hey Josh! Um, that I have coming up here over the next few days. So, um, I have some great guests this weekend in addition to Peter. So uh, tomorrow I have Erin Elizabeth Burgey of Megabog. She's gonna be talking, she made one of my favorite albums last year called Dolphine. And um, on Sunday I have Chicago artist Sophie Brochu of Fovely. She'll be joining us. Um, next Friday, Seema Cunningham of Ohm here in Chicago will be talking to me. And on um, next Saturday, we've got Jess Showman of Tinsey. Uh, she'll, be, she'll be coming on. And then Sunday, we have Gabe Leibowitz of Calvero. So I've got a lot of really great guests coming up. And we're just going to wait for Peter to join. We talked yesterday, so he knows the deal. Hopefully he's not sleeping in. Um, on this Monday, I am going to be doing a show, just to tell you about it, called Live Rhymes. Um, Shana Hoffman uh, has a show. I think it's once a month at Cafe Mustache, but now she's doing it uh, through Twitch. So if you're going to watch that, make sure you get Twitch, and I'm going to be the musical guest, and there's also going to be Jim Franks, who's going to be on it, as well as Zach Hebert and Crosby Sandoval. That's going to be at 7 o'clock this Monday on Twitch, Live Rhymes. And it uh, looks like Peter's here, so let me go ahead and go live. Thanks guys for joining. Peter is just joining the, the chat right now. I'm just waiting for him to connect. Hi. Hey. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for thank you for doing this. No problem. Thanks for having so, me. So <laughs> just to introduce you, you you're a label mate. We're label mates on Western Vinyl and you just put out a brand new album last Friday called The Greener Pasture. Is that right? Yeah, accurate. And then and then you've got a new song that you put up on Bandcamp today for the Bandcamp. Uh, the Waving Their Fees special day? Yep, just put it on for today. Uh, I'll probably take it down at the end of the day um, and then like put it back up like everywhere uh, at the end of May. Okay, so cool. I just, I just felt like it, you know. That's Yeah, that's great. A little, little something extra. Um, well, I, you know, I wanted to ask you on, the whole idea behind this is to, is for musicians to share their stories about what their lives look like before, what it looks like now, you know, how you've been kind of impacted, how your music has been impacted or not been impacted, but just basically to get a sense of what this is all feeling like for you. And it felt like good timing too, since you've got a new album out to talk to you a little bit. So what I'm using, you're in Indiana right now, right? Yep. I'm in Bloomington. Were you in Chicago not that long ago? I, uh, I I tried living in Chicago for a few months, uh, fall of 2017. Um, it was, uh, I, my previous album came out November 2017, Anthropocene. Mm -hmm. um, and so I found myself uh, like touring quite a bit and I kind of moved it at a bad time to like try to get established with like a, you know, decent job and stuff. Um, so I, uh, you know, uh, when I was there, I was like, you know, doing delivery driving, and I was uh, uh, doing some, um, what do you call it? Uh, I was a valet briefly. Uh, and Where'd then, you valet? Uh, down, let's see, what, what is it, the near west side or whatever, river west or whatever, um, uh, some company called Descartes LA or something like that. Like what all those restaurants are? Yeah, yeah. So that was, uh, it was weird. Uh, it was, you know, not great. Uh, but, you know, kind of fun uh, to just like run around and um, try to figure out how to like cheat their system for like actual money. Uh, uh -huh. It seemed like basically anybody who was there for any amount of time, um, you know, figured out how to like park cars without going in their system so that they could actually like make decent money, um, which was weird. But then, uh, I mean, I, it, it got cold pretty quick, you know, in Chicago, and I got like one bad shift where I was like, I didn't get any cars, and uh, it was freezing, and so I was like, you know what, this isn't working for me, and you know, the issue with Chicago for me was um, I've been trying to do more of my own recording and mixing, mm -hmm. and 
uh, you know, living in a city like that just doesn't really afford um, me the like uh, insulation um, as much as isolation to um, be really effective recording in, in my home. So uh, I, I found that it really wasn't worth the price that I was paying. Um, and, uh, you know, it was bad timing, but um, uh, eventually my timeline's pretty blurry. Uh, but I spent a lot of like 2018, like um, in and out of my, my parents' place uh, and like spent some time on the road, um, whether touring or just like crashing in the back of my truck. And, uh, and so, yeah, eventually I, you know, I lived in Nashville, Indiana for much of 2019 and recorded in a cabin in Nashville, Indiana, um, uh, this, this new record, The Greener Pasture. Um, and then finally I, I decided to invest in, you know, myself and take, take better care of myself. And, um, uh, so yeah, now I'm in a place of my own where I can record whenever I want, uh, in Bloomington. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you feel like you've got a good setup here where you are currently? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's been good so far. Um, you know, just been trying to keep at it with the recording and writing. And um, I have like a, a spare bedroom, which feels like luxurious. Uh, mm -hmm. I can like have, you know, people who are touring or just like friends passing through uh, yeah. to stay. And um, it, it's kind of like architecturally like it was kind of the most reasonable choice. I feel kind of bad to have a spare bedroom when, you know, there are people out there living on the streets. Um, but in order to like have your own space that's far enough away from um, other people to record and play drums mm -hmm. without anybody uh, um, getting on me about it, uh, it's kind of necessary to kind of have your own house to a degree. So um, that's what I ended up doing. Where are you from originally? I'm from Columbus, Indiana. So that's about 45 minutes away east of Bloomington. Okay. Um, and so it, it's uh, nice to be able to kind of uh, be in a community that um, is familiar. I went to school in Bloomington for a couple of years before mm -hmm. dropping out. Um, and so I'm, I'm close to my folks and uh, uh, my dad has a kind of a hobbyist woodworking shop and a whole bunch of lumber um, that I can go, you know, work uh, out of his shop and um, build myself some furniture and pick up some skills to like have a supplemental income sort of thing going on. So it feels good to be in Indiana. I, I'm not, I, I was seriously considering like a bigger city, like in LA or Nashville mm -hmm. um, for the sake of kind of diving deeper into the music industry. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't hardly feel like an authentic thing to do. Um, I, I feel like, uh, um, staying someplace that, uh, you know, suffers a bit from brain drain. Um, you know, people that may, ha yeah. may have more progressive tendencies tend to leave Indiana. Yeah. Um, and so uh, sticking around and being someplace that's affordable um, and, uh, you know, that feels authentic and um, it feels good. I, instead of looking for another middleman in the music industry or something to make me big or whatever, it's uh, it was a choice to kind of commit to the craft and um, uh, to make it on my own to a degree. Okay. Well, what, I mean, theoretically, you know, what would you, apart from, you wouldn't have the space um, and the sort of the affordability for recording in your own space in a bigger city, but what parts of the music industry do you see you would theoretically have more access to if you lived in like LA or Nashville or I mean, LA in particular, uh, I think would be useful to have, uh, to like mingle with people who are music supervisors, um, mm -hmm. uh, who could, you know, get uh, placements in, um, television or commercials and movies. Uh, that's such a significant, um, opportunity for income for musicians these mm -hmm. days, uh, that that is one of the main draws to LA, but uh, pretty much every time I go to LA, I'm like, uh, I just, I just couldn't do it. Like I, I can't handle the Why driving not? and all the driving, like the, the, my first impression of LA was, uh, driving into LA from the East. Um, and just like immediately noticing that, like coming down from the mountains and noticing that like clear layer of smog, um, and just like an intense amount of traffic. 
um, I, I, I'm a bit of a country boy and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I prefer to be, you know, surrounded by trees and greenery. And, um, so, I mean, uh, LA is nice if you can be by the beach, but I'm not a sunglasses person. I don't, I don't care for the sun particularly, to be honest, like uh -huh. that's just, <laughs> and, and I, I, uh, I, I visited, uh, 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 there once and, um, had dinner with a, a friend who's uh, an artist in artist management and uh, he ended up taking me to uh, Soho house in West Hollywood, which at the time I had no clue what it was. Um, and uh, so we're, we're getting like valet parked behind a Ferrari and like the, the person checking us into this exclusive, you know, penthouse bar or whatever kind of like looks me up and down. And I was wearing this like hand me down Columbia jacket uh, that I got from my like grandpa or something and she was like so is it just you and Columbia uh, here tonight and uh, it like took me a minute for her to register like that she was you know throwing shade and uh, so I mean I, I don't know I'm just like not for the you know the rat race basically but um, definitely like the the opportunities in, in music supervision and, and getting syncs and that kind of thing um, uh, is a big deal Somebody's asking if I know Mike Budovsky. Um, I don't know if we've ever had a, a conversation. Um, Mike is a, a, he runs Russian recording in Bloomington. Um, and I don't know if we've ever talked, but I definitely know who he is. Just to answer a question real quick. Oh, okay. That's actually for my husband. Oh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, he's in the kitchen right now listening in. Um, yeah. Do you, so speaking of rat race, do you, do you work? Were you working before all of this, you know, this quarantine started uh, yes. apart from music? Um, well, uh, you know, I, I tend to stretch money as best I can. Um, and uh, uh, so last year I worked at a cabinet shop um, and basically until I got an advance for the new record. Um, and then kind of stretched that as far as I could. I was living really cheap, um, you know, virtually no social life last year, which is why this whole, you know, lockdown has not hardly been noticeable for me. Um, uh, but so, yeah, I, I stretched the advance for a while and then eventually um, ended up doing some work for uh, somebody I knew um, in Columbus who Mills Wood um, for Martin Guitar. Um, so I, I worked for him. Basically, my, my work is sporadic and as need be. Mm -hmm. um, this year, I convinced uh, a Western Vinyl to let me do my own PR um, and to devote some of the marketing budget uh, to that. Um, so I, I was kind of living off of that for most of the year. And now that the album's out, um, uh, I no longer have that. Uh, so it's bad timing for me to like need more work, but, um, people have been supportive buying a new record and stuff. So, um, that plus, you know, a stimulus check might make, you know, might, might keep yeah. me rolling for a little while, but, uh, you know, it, it can only last so long. So I, I'm, I'm definitely check to check, um, not necessarily paycheck to paycheck, but definitely check to check. Um, and so, Do yeah, you... it's, uh. Is that stressful? Do you just roll with it? How oh, yeah. It? Oh, yeah. It's so stressful. Um, I, like, I, I think I've been, like, losing color in patches in my beard. Um, I think over the last few years, just from, you know, I, I, I had a malnutrition or stress. I don't know what it is. But, yeah, I mean, it's super stressful. Uh, there's, there's no two ways about it. And it's, it always stinks to, like, have to find a new bit of work, um, you know, to have never finished my degree and to never have like settled into a profession um, apart from music. Mm -hmm. um, I've just been like pushing for years to, you know, try to make money in music as mm -hmm. best I can. Um, and so that's been difficult. I mean, I, I had booking agents come on um, with Anthropocene a couple years ago, a few mm -hmm. years ago. Um, one of them, uh, you know, quit booking altogether and took a job at SoundCloud. And then another uh, dropped me, um, it was Paradigm. And so I was probably a bottom earner um, and was uh, uh, the unfortunate um, victim of a corporate call. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's stressful, but I, I've uh, learned to um, do what I need to do to, you know, make ends meet. And, uh, you know, it's, 
it's humbling and uh, fulfilling to like have work apart from music to, you know, do something physically. Um, so, I mean, I've been trying to pick up carpentry and furniture building as a, a, you know, something that I can do on my own without needing, um, that I, you know, can supplement my income as I go. Um, and I really enjoy working with my hands. Um, so uh, that, that feels like there could be a future um, for me in that, but at the same time to be a furniture building is like a whole new, uh, you know, venture out in and of itself, a whole new enterprise where you have to establish yourself and establish a brand in the same way that you do. Yeah. Like, so um, I probably have not worked my last job um, and I'm not sure what the next one will be, but um, I'm kind of in the same boat as everybody else uh, with the economy as it is. So you may catch me stacking avocados in a grocery store here before too long. I'm not sure. I've done it before. I may do it again. You know, yeah. no big deal. What was it like to do your own PR? How did you, I'm curious about that experience. Um, I mean, it's a whole bunch of just sitting at the computer and sending emails to people who may or may not respond. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that I did a great job, um, but you know, there were a few pretty good reviews, um, I thought, mm -hmm. um, for the album. Um, uh, so, I mean, yeah, uh, the, there were, it was hit or miss, um, but it was, it was good to, you know, have a sense of stability with, uh, you know, the, a check coming every yeah. month. Um, and definitely not my, my choice of work to be, you know, pushing my own music or to be sending yeah. emails in general, but, uh, you know, it, it paid the bills and, uh, it's easy to do from home. So, um, I felt, you know, good about it. And I was grateful that, you know, Brian at Western Vinyl had, had an open mind about it and, mm -hmm. uh, could see how that was uh, a good way for me to, you know, supplement my income and, uh, you know, generally focus on the music, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to send a bunch of emails. So um, it was, it was much appreciated that he had an open mind about that for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How, so have you felt, I mean, it sounds like maybe the circumstances of your life haven't changed that much. Have you felt either personally or musically impacted by the pandemic or the quarantine? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I moved back to Bloomington in December uh, and it's, uh, you and know, that was, I, I was, that was from, uh, the cabin. Well, I oh, was, yeah. yeah, I was at a cabin in Nashville and, mm -hmm. you know, took a couple of months again at my parents' basement, uh, you know, uh, the classic thing, um, to kind of decide, you know, a, to accumulate, uh, you know, the money that I needed to, to move because I didn't have a, an a excellent exit strategy from the cabin, but, um, I mean, being back in Bloomington since December has been, you know, it, it, it's only half an hour from where the cabin was, but mm -hmm. I was, you know, you know, pinching pennies so much that it was hard to justify, um, you know, the, the trip to Bloomington for, um, you know, social reasons at times. Um, so, uh, so I've been like trying to reconnect and stuff in Bloomington it, and it's certainly been a bummer. I mean, everybody in Bloomington um, looks forward to the summer when, yeah. Uh, this it's a university town so students um tend to leave um and uh so the, the streets clear out and it, it's a little bit less busy mm -hmm. uh, you know it, it's really nice to like ride your bike around and go to the quarries and take a swim and go to the lake and take a swim um so i mean it's it's definitely a bummer to not like be able to uh hang out with friends um and i think everybody's suffering from that um but i mean uh, yeah, I've, I've been living in isolation for years to a degree. So, um, I'm kind of a pro at it and, uh, -huh. uh it's, uh, it feels relatively normal to, you know, be kind of hermetic. Um, but I mean, of course it stinks, you know, I, I'd rather be, um, in a groove and seeing people, but I think I'm yeah. handling it. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, it definitely feels like it's easier for some people than other people, depending on how you're built. Yeah. Yeah. What about, what about your your creativity? Is it are you is this been impacted? Is it inspiring you? Are you just doing your thing? Is that has it touched you at all that way? Um, no, I mean no. I I have a whole bunch of songs that you know need to be polished up and mm -hmm. uh, the recordings need to be finished. Um, so I've just been trying to 
stay focused on that. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say that I've written a lockdown song or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, my, my songs are what they are to a degree. And, um, so, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that it has had a major effect on my creative patterns, mm -hmm. uh, so much as it's like, you know, kind of, I, I'd been considering the, the possibility of like utilizing streaming technology, uh, mm -hmm. uh, for the sake of playing shows around the world anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but it just always seemed kind of like a lame thing to do, like, uh, uh, you know, nobody, it, it, everybody, I, I would much rather be at a live show than watching a, a streamed um, show uh, with poor audio. Um, but, you know, it, I, I felt justified or whatever in, um, you know, taking that path. And You've been doing trying, a lot of those. Yeah, I mean, I've tried to like, uh, you know, keep up with more just social media content despite the, um, you know, the critical tone of you know the album it's a lot about phone culture and how problematic it is so i mean I, i've certainly been reluctant to dig into social media as a format for self-expression and mm -hmm. for um you know content in general i really don't like giving social media platforms free content for them to monetize through advertisements and whatever else um and for it to be you know difficult to monetize that as a musician myself um uh, but, you know, it's like there's not really a lot of choice and it seems like people are cooped up and, and scrolling on their phones anyway. So I may as well, you know, support the album um, in that way by just like putting my face online and with a, a song, you know, every day or close mm -hmm. to it. So I've been trying to dig in and do the due diligence of uh, self-promotion, but it's not my forte and it's not yeah. really, I'm not, I don't enjoy it, but like. You know, it seems like people get a kick out of hearing a song every once in a while from me. Have you been enjoying the online performances? Have, has that changed at all since you've started doing them? Mm, I'm getting slightly more comfortable with it, uh -huh. uh, but I don't. You know, it's it's uh it's not the same. I mean, I, I like I like uh, being in a room uh, with people and to, uh, you know to to hear their response if I tell a joke. You know, it's uh. I like telling jokes between songs. That's like mm -hmm. probably my favorite thing about playing live is just, uh, you know, explaining the songs and just being present with people and um, getting that immediate reaction from people um, is a lot of fun. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you have the delayed effect of people typing comments and stuff uh, yeah. that just isn't the same, but um, you know, it, you, you work with what you have and uh it is what it is it's not my favorite i would rather rather not but um something is better than nothing i suppose how do you i'm curious about do you have a um when you're starting to work on a song how does an idea come to you or how do you how do you start to flush out an idea what does that look like i mean uh I always have, uh, this is, this is basically the only brand that I'll like support without money. You can't, it, it would be read backwards, but I have the Moleskine or yeah. Moleskine pocket notepads. I always have a notepad and a, and a pen with me, uh -huh. um, just to, you know, capture little thoughts or, you know, words and rhymes mm -hmm. and whatever else. So, um, I tend to collect ideas and lyrics, um, all the time um you know like a water catchment system for a garden or whatever it's just like if it's there it's there and i'll grab it um and then try to process it later on um sometimes with those words come melodies uh mm -hmm. uh you know absent a chord progression or an instrumentation or anything like that um but you know uh the other half of the time i'll sit down with the guitar and play something and just like kind of let my fingers and you know, mind do what they want to do and um, uh, chase that idea as best I can. Um, and then sometimes draw from the note, notepad to, uh, mm -hmm. to make things possible. Um, and then, you know, I, I've been trying to play, you know, as many of the instruments myself as I can these days. Um, so recently I, 
I was sitting down to like try to practice drums and uh, just like had a really basic tom fill that I was doing over and over and mm -hmm. just kind of looped it and uh, that turned into an idea for a song that I'm kind of excited about but um, generally it's either you know coming from the notepad and coming from the words or um, coming from a guitar tune that I'm trying to uh, pr you know project words onto. Okay mm -hmm. and you said this latest album it's partially kind of talking about the culture as it is now with with this relationship we have with social media and phones and technology is that that's a big theme in the album? Yeah um, definitely so I mean generally speaking um, yeah, there's like a, a Tim Cook quote, um, Apple CEO. He said, if you're not paying for a product, you are the product. Mm -hmm. um, and so the notion that uh, these free apps are um, built to extract your attention um, for the sake of advertising or, uh, you know, data collection in general. Um, I think that that's really problematic that those social environments be geared towards profit and uh um you know designed in such a way that you're continually scrolling you're kind of strung out in a linear way um uh such that they maximize you, your the amount of time that you spend on the app they call it you know sticky design or something like that where you get stuck on the app and by the time you get to the end of the new content that you haven't seen there's even more to return to up top um so I think that there's a lot of um, problems with that kind of design um, and it feels like uh, extractive. I feel like it's a design that um, fails to address people's actual needs um, uh, socially uh, and otherwise um, uh, in favor of, you know, the, the company's um, needs and their bottom line. And that's a pattern that is you know, widespread in capitalism, um, uh, such that like, you know, you have uh, companies that, that treat their workers like a cost and they have no incentive to, uh, you know, improve wages when, um, you know, that hurts their bottom line. Um, so they do just the bare minimum to um, keep people uh, functioning as, you know, for, for lack of a more creative um, analogy is like cogs in the wheel um and so yeah i mean that's that's th th there's that um specific uh instance of um phones being used uh uh and people being used through their phones mm -hmm. and then more generally uh patterns of of capitalism wherein wealth and power are accumulated um for the benefit of the wealthy and powerful and the perpetuation of that power um uh, to the detriment of, of the people. Um, uh, and so, yeah, that, that uh, you could closely tie to um, Michel Foucault's notion of biopower, um, which I think is a pretty useful way of, of uh, you know, looking at things if you want to take a look at his work. I, I won't claim to be a, a, a major academic in terms of uh, his work, but uh, I've skimmed and I like the ideas, so. Have you read The Attention Merchants? Huh. That's, that'd be right up your alley, although it's everything you already know, but it's good. The, the Attention Merchants? The Attention Merchants, yeah. I'll write it in my notepad where all <laughs> ideas and recommendations go. That's not Foucault, I assume. It's no. A, that's a, uh, that's a, it's a, a modern. New, a recent it's thing. Pretty recent, yeah. That's cool. Pretty. Well, I, you know, I mean, has it been hard? Has this been hard for you at all? Any harder than usual? Is life fine, easy, hard? You know, I've been taking it a day at a time, mm -hmm. uh, trying not to get too worked up about things. Um, you know, it's uh, it's not been fun, but, you know, I've got a garden going in the front yard, um, something to put, you know, to, 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 to physically distract me. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not far from some hiking trails, so, uh, you know, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm not great, but you know, I don't, I don't know that anybody's doing that great um, these days. So yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm okay. I'm all right. It would definitely be nice to be around nature. That's something that I'm feeling right now is be nice to be able to go on a hike. And yeah. A little bit. Yeah. That's the problem with city living. It's, uh, 
you know, I, have you noticed an air quality difference in Chicago? It's, uh, I don't know that I've noticed that, I guess. I'm sure there is one, but I'm, my lungs are so bad, I can't tell the difference anymore, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I uh, have, have adjusted um, certain habits of certain consumption lately to try to improve my lungs health. Um, so yeah, I've, uh, I've been adjusting um, things and trying to go on bike rides and stuff more to, you know, try to try to improve all aspects of my health. So yeah, I mean, I'm compensating for, um, for new patterns in what ways that I can and trying to trying to be healthy as best that I can. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, city living has got to be tough in the lockdown. I, I don't know how you do it because it's uh, there's a lot of space out here. There's a lot of greenery. It's uh, you know, it's it's been kind of crazy that you know the world's you know there there've been time times during the lockdown when I've been in a really good mood and like looking at the birds chirping and the mm -hmm. and the flowers uh, you know coming up. It's like spring is springing around me it's you know a reminder that uh you know the world's just going to keep moving um and uh these these patterns of life are cyclical and um you know it's unfortunate that we're caught in the middle of like this downturn but um i've you know it's it's uh, nice to have these uh seasonal reminders of of life uh you know coming around this spring so um i've been pretty good i i pity the people who have loud neighbors and are stuck in small apartments with their, uh, you know, young families and, and whatever yeah. else. But at the same time, you know, some amount of company would probably be better than the none sure. that I have. So uh, it's uh, six one and half a dozen the other, I suppose. Well, I think that's a good thought to end on. Where where can people, uh, it's, it's you know, Bandcamp is, is waiving the revenue share today, so that's a place, but can you let people know where they can find find your music? Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, peteroren.bandcamp.com is, you know, where I sell much, much of my merch. I'm using a, uh, a hand-built phone stand right now uh, that is available. These are available on Bandcamp. Uh, so this is one of the knickknacks that I built. Uh, uh, That's cool. To, yeah, to sell as merch to accompany my, my record. And um, I have a number of other things, including the Greener Pasture, available on vinyl on Bandcamp. Um, so if people feel like, uh, throwing some money my way, that's a, a great way to do it for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for agreeing to be on the show and sharing. And it was really nice to talk to you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate, uh, the opportunity to hang out with somebody virtually, you know, totally. it's yeah. nice, to, nice to meet you. And, uh, you know, next, next time we should have a, a more two way conversation here at, uh, like to hear what you're you're up to and hope hope you're well and your family's doing good and yeah i, I can see a, a show maybe sometime in the future once once we can that'd be good I have to hit okay. up Foley at the hideout or something all right well thank you um stay well stay safe and uh we'll catch up later sounds good okay bye okay okay so that was peter so great for him to come on and uh just want to, for those who are still here, I want to uh, share my guests that are coming up this weekend. Tomorrow I have Erin Elizabeth Burgey of Megabog. She's going to be talking to me at 2.30 p.m. Uh, Central Time again. And Sunday, Sophie Brochu of Fogley. She's here in Chicago. Next Friday, I've got Seema Cunningham of Um, And Saturday, Jess Showman of Tinsey. And the next Sunday, Gabe Leibowitz of Calvero. So I have some great guests coming up. And thank you guys for tuning in and watching. Go support Peter Oren. Please go support also Western Vinyl, westernvinyl.com. They've got so many great artists on their roster, and it's a good time to, to hit them up and keep them going, too. So thank you very much for watching Music Therapy. I'll be back tomorrow at 2.30. Thanks. Bye.